I was thinking about this song as I was thinking through this song as I was uh, preparing for the message. And then uh, and the question came to mind, have you ever uh, have you ever reflected back off of your, all of your journey and you've seen God bring you through uh, some tough period of your life? And as you've seen God bring you through kind of the valley of whatever the struggle is that you were going through, move to the to the side when you feel like that you feel the victory in the Lord. And some would feel like that you're walking for everybody in this fellowship. And when that moment came, as those moments as you're walking in that, maybe you're walking in that right now. Have you ever had the attempt of the world or the enemy to just plant seeds, some seed of fear in your mind? Is, is this real stuff? I mean, you've, you've got the experiential knowledge, you've walked with it, you've lived a little bit. So you've seen that God will God's promises are true. He's delivered you from some stuff. Mm -hmm. And you're standing. You're standing. Mm -hmm. And yet still in the back of your mind, uh, when you face something that looks like maybe the danger that you came through, or the pit that you fell in, or the temptation that floated across you and maybe drug you in in the past, or, uh, this, 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 this flesh and this carnal side of you begins to want to fear just wants to make you anxious, wants to take your eye off the blessing of God. Yes. Yes. C.H. Spurgeon is a noted theologian. He says about this particular Psalter that there are three, three quick themes in here. There's a theme of confidence. There's a theme of promise. And there's a theme of prayer. I want to spend a little time with you in Psalm 125. Uh, our focal verse we're reading together, if you found it, is verse number three. Find it in your Bibles. We're putting it up on the screen. And if you don't mind, stand with me. Let us read from the, from the screen together. If we're ready, it says, For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto the wicked. Now, our subject matter, as you take your seats, is the Lord's protection. The Lord's protection. I don't know what you're going through today, but I know everybody's going through something. And we desperately need what the Lord has to hear, what the Lord has to say about that. This is just one of the powerful scriptures that gives us some insight into God's grace, mercy, and goodness. And so it opens up with these first couple of verses. I have three life lessons to share with you this morning. And it opens up with, with two verses. I'll, I'll read from the Amplified while you look at this on the screen. Verse 1 and 2 says, Those who trust, lean on, and confidently hope in the Lord are as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides and stands fast forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from this time forth and forever. He died down first life lesson is this for the day. True stability comes from a personal relationship and trust in God. Respond. True stability comes from a personal relationship and trust in God. Respond. The writers don't give us the background. They don't give us all the, uh, historians don't give us all the information that led, leads into this cycle. Many have said this could be one of David's psalters when, he's, when, he was, uh, when he was in his kingship and thinking back over his journey, some of the things that have gone on in his walk of life. Some have said this may have been a, a psalm written about Israel after it come out of captivity. But what we get a sense of is that, that there is a need, even in the, midst of, uh, even in the midst of their victorious walk right now, there's a need for added confidence in the Lord. Something is attempting to evade. Something is attempting to shape the foundation of that confidence. And, and, and there's a need. And as if the psalmist is, is, is encouraging and uplifting himself while he's encouraging and uplifting uh, God's people, 
he brings them back to a fundamental, fundamental component here. That, that, that when you put your faith in, in the God of the universe, and when I said it, it almost sounds like it's too sterile. When, when you've been through some stuff, I got I to gotta drive into somebody's neighborhood. It's not real to you until, until you reflect. Take just a moment and think about what, what's going on in my life that's been troublesome. What's going on in my journey that's been difficult? What, what have I actually experienced that's made me think a little bit, pause a little bit? Because every now and then we have this, this, this tendency in the flesh, and help me out, church, we have this tendency in our carnal natures to want to put our trust and our faith in everything but God, you know? We, we, come on, talk to me like I'm still here. We, 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 we focus, we're so focused on this thing called living uh, in, in this fleshly body that we're in that we miss the reality of, of what God is saying, who God says we are, what God says we're here to do, and what God wants to accomplish through us. And we get so caught up in the day to day, can I help somebody? We get all caught up in the what's, what's happening on my nine to five when I get up on Monday morning. What's happening with my children, even though these are all important things. What's happening with my health here? What are the things that I'm facing that are difficulties in my journey here? And our eyes get so focused. We get, we, we get so compartmentalized and so analytical in our walk that if we're not careful, we lose sight of the fact that God is in charge. And it's an interesting thing about humanity. It's interesting. Let me not generalize it. It's an interesting thing about you and me. That if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves putting our confidence in areas that God does not want us to put our full confidence in. There's a level of confidence he wants you to have, but it does not supersede confidence in him. Can I say it that way? So if, if you're looking at your circumstances around you, Come on, Red. and you're seeing whirlwinds happening in your life, let me go there. If, you, if it looks like you're, you're, your situations are always flying around, there doesn't seem to be any settling point there. There's, you know, there's no groundedness there. Or even if it feels like it's going good most of the time, but then every now and then a stiff wind comes through your house and, and kind of lets you know that you're, you, know, you really don't have control of this thing here. You know, just a little bit of a blow and all this will be down before you know it. Just, just a little change in somebody's mind and you walk in on Monday morning and all of this that you put all, you put all these years in could be gone. Just, just a little bit of a report from a doctor and all of that stuff that's going on inside of you can come to the surface and make you feel like you, you just don't have control. The psalmist says, put your trust in, lean on, confidently hope in the Lord, the Lord. Not in your knowledge, lean not upon your own understanding. Come on, man. Not in your circumstances, not in your friendships, not in... It's not saying that those are not important, it says, but the fundamental, let me get back to the basics. The back to the basic step that must be taken is that we must put our trust and faith, lean on and confidently hope in God Almighty. And he says you can do that because when you do that, it'll be like you're, it'll be like you're dealing with the God who is unmovable. He's unshakable. He is not going to forsake you. In other words, it's one thing to put your hope in things that can vanish away, rust away, moth can eat them, that can catch on fire and disappear. Put your, put your hope in things that, that when the people, when they change their minds, they like you one moment, I'm going to preach to somebody. Don't like you the next moment. Smile in your face one moment, call you the greatest thing one moment, next thing you know, talking about you the next moment. You know, you put your, can I talk to somebody? I'm feeling like a preaching moment here now. You, you can put your faith and trust in those types of things and they will disappoint you on a regular basis. But when you put your trust in the Lord, it can be like Mount Zion. It says it cannot be moved. It says it rides and it stands fast forever. It says that, and not only that, it says, as, as the mountains are all around Jerusalem, so the Lord is around his, is about his people. Now that, I'm starting to get happy when I start thinking about the reality of not only has God brought me through, not only have I seen his hand leading me through the valley of the shadow of death itself, pulling me through that thing, and once I get through, helping me to understand what the lessons are that I needed to learn while I was coming through the valley of the shadow of death itself. But he says, you need to understand, son, he wasn't just pulling you through the valley, he was protecting you in the valley. He said he had his forces all around you. You couldn't see him. Angelic force were protecting you on your front side, on your back side, on your right side, and your left side. And when the enemy tried to attack you, God was unmovable. And he had your back. Since I just came by, I want to wear the confidence for you today.
today. If there's any shaking going on in, on your foundation, if, if you feel like there's a crack in your foundation and, and then there's some stuff getting into your household, he says, I just came by the chain of that. Have some confidence. Have all confidence in God. And it comes from this. I mean, you can't have confidence in it if you don't know it. Come on, Brad. We're back to the basics now. Unless you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you may have confidence that there is a God, but He's not your God. You still don't know Him. You may know of Him, but you don't know Him. You may have heard about Him, but you don't know Him. You may like somebody else's testimony, but you ain't got nothing for yourself. <laughs> She said, put that confidence in the, out of the relationship and out of the ongoing fellowship and let God develop your faith walk as you journey through life. You will begin to look at life with a new set of eyes. You really will. You really will. <laughs> Difficulties will look different to you when you know that you have your faith in an unmovable un God. Yeah. Am I right about that? Somehow, even when the tinge of fear wants to come, the flesh wants to act up, the spirit says, no, no, that's not what's happening here. You're a child of the king. King is in charge. So just respond to God's grace and mercy and strength. In verse 3 that we read together, it says, and we amplified this, for the scepter of wickedness, shall not rest upon the land of the amplified, of the uncompromisingly righteous, you know, those in right relationship, those acting and living out there in right, in right standing with the Lord. Lest the righteous, God's people, stretch forth their hands to iniquity and apostasy. Uh, second life lesson is this, if you judge. God will not test believers beyond their ability to survive and to thrive. Relax. <laughs> Am I scriptural? Yes. They said it so many different ways in the scriptures. You know, uh, you, you, not, you there'll be not there'll be no more burden on you. Then God will give you grace and mercy to bear. Uh, he says in one song, when the enemy tries to snap, tries to snag you into a snare, God will always provide a way of escape. Yes. He's basically letting you know that this is a learning process. It's a learning process. So now that I've got my sense in, in the opening couple of verses from the psalm that there, that there is a, uh, there's a reason for me to be confident in my, in my faith and confident in the God of my faith and the walk <coughs> and fellowship that I have with him. It's, 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 there's a level of confidence that he steals in me, but, it's, but that's only as a result of the confidence I have in him. Then he wants us to understand that now there's a promise. That goes along with that confidence. Not only is this mountain, not only is this God that we serve immovable, unshakable, what force is going to stand against the God that we serve? In the midst of your journey, lifelong journey, walking in your daily, day to day situations, He wants you to understand that He will not allow, He will not allow this, I like this wording, and the amplified, the scepter of wickedness. In other words, he's, the enemy may come at you, and He may, the enemy may come at you, and He may have. He may have what appears on the surface to be some strategic victory. Can I say it that way? You may get worried. You may get fearful. You may even, you may even fall in the midst of the temptation. That's not falling from any grace now. You, you can't, you're not falling from the Lord. You, you can't become an unsigned once you're a son. So let me be clear. Come on, Brad. So you may, you, may, you may break some fellowship. Be real. Come on, Doc. I'm trying to, am I making this plain? Help me out. But even though the enemy's, even though the enemy's uh, hand, even though the enemy's trickery may appear to be having impact and influence for the moment on your life, God, while the enemy's using it to pull you away or separate you or to make your faith falter, God is using it to strengthen you. There are valuable lessons that God will teach even in the midst of whatever struggle we're in. That's what he's saying. The scepter may, you know, the, 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 the scepter may, of wickedness may try to rest on you for a season, but the Lord will not let it stay there any longer. I mean, he's the judge. He knows. Come on, man. It's not going to stay there so that it does you eternal harm. 
or, or breaks any of his promises. He said that the Lord will make sure there's a way of escape. There's a promise there. So now, let me just let me just talk through this thing a little bit. If I serve, if and it is true that we serve a God who's in control, he's all powerful, he's all knowledgeable, he's all present, he's love, he's righteousness. Thank you, God, that your grace and your mercy is pure and he's holy. I can count on him. He says it, and he cannot lie. Come on, man. Come on, man. Huh? He said it in his word. And he says all of his promises are true. They will be fulfilled. Oh, yeah. are, are you starting to jot this down in your memory bank? He's giving you all of this enforcement and encouragement that you need for your daily walk. Yeah. So what are you preparing me for? Because there are going to be times when you bump up against a mess. Come on, well, why do I need to know that this mountain, that you're like Mount Zion and you're immovable? And you got me, you got me surrounded and protected on all my sides. Because there's going to be times when you need protection on all your sides, mm -hmm. and you need to know before you get into the battle that indeed God has already been there preparing you for the battle. You, you need to know, church family, that you're not walking into a defeat mechanism. You're walking in victory. And even though your circumstances all around you look like the enemy's in camp and he's got all the forces and strongholds in place, and he can crash down. God says, Come on, I'm not going to let the scepter of wickedness rest on you. Don't, don't get worried out there now. It may look like it's going downhill and going downhill fast. I'm talking to somebody but myself. This is good preaching. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know how you describe what, your, what the cesspool of your life looks like at this moment. But you know that it doesn't look good, doesn't smell good, doesn't feel good. Nothing about it, nothing about it seems like it ought to be right. You don't want to stay here. You don't want to live here. You don't want to abide here. You want to get up out of here. And you need to know if the enemy got victory over my life, then when God says, why are you asking the question? I've already told you that you're a victor. I've already told you that you're a son of God of God. I've already told you, God says, that I'm like an immovable mountain. And I've got your back front, right and left side. So if I've got all Your focus needs to be on the immovable mount. Yes. Am I reading that? The enemy is going to throw the scepter. Keep your eye on the mount. The enemy is going to keep trying to throw darts at you. Keep your eye on the mount. And then he closes out in this interesting two verses. Four and five amplified says, do good, he enters into what C.H. Spurgeon calls the time of prayer. Do good, O oh Lord, to those who are good, to those who are right with you and all people in their hearts. As for such as turn aside to their crooked ways of indifference to God, the Lord will lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. Peace will be on Israel, God's people. Final life lesson is this. God's grace and his peace are his promises to faithful followers. Rejoice. It's simple. The stability comes from our personal relationship and trust in God respond. God will not test believers beyond their abilities to survive and to thrive. Relax. God's grace and peace are his promises to all faithful followers. Rejoice. But you say, Lord, why does it seem like the wicked are always prospering? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he pulled up a seat beside David when he was moaning on one of his songs. Why does it seem like they always got the money? They always got the houses. They always got the land. Why does it seem like you know, they get all the privileges? They got the fame. They got all that, you know. As if God is, is somehow closing his eyes to what's happening in the world scene today. Come on, really? The text says, 
Don't go wearing yourself about what's going on. Come on, raise business. Can I give a pastor a paraphrase here? You, you got enough to do to live your life. Focus in that and be the best God would have you to be. You don't have to be worried about what's going on in the enemy's camp over there. I've already told you, God says, that I'm an immovable mountain in your life. Are you covered on your all sides? I told you the enemy is going to try to mess with you, but I'm not going to let him mess with you too much. It's going to be, it's not going to be a test that breaks your back. It's going to be a test that builds you up. Come on, Rick. Hmm? So now with that in mind, you just do, you just be obedient to the word of God and you follow and walk with him through Christ Jesus. And don't worry about all that. Let God's grace and his mercy and peace envelop and, and inspire you to be who God wants you to be and to do what God wants you to do. He says, because God will take care, take care of those who turn aside from him. God will handle that. That's in his plan and purpose. Not your plan and purpose to be the judge, the ultimate judge of that. You need to plant the seed. You plant the good news about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And so, what do I do with that? Now I've got, now the Lord is saying, this is the energy that you're focusing on following behind rumors. Let me go over here. <laughs> you know, that, 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 in there, that emotional and intellectual energy that you're expending, uh, maybe even at this moment, while we're talking to you, thinking and worrying about what somebody else might be doing or what somebody else might have said about you. Come on, oh, yeah. Is that in your text? <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, how somebody's feeling, you know, we, we can create storylines in our minds that are that are way out of scale of what might be going on in our real lives, you know. It's a funny thing how creative we can get when we worry about other folks' stuff. The text, is, the text is telling me, the principle underneath the text is telling me, just do good to those who are, just, just do good. Be, be, be who Christ would want you to be in the lives of those he sends across your path. And don't worry about those who are turning aside from God. He said, God will take care of them. While he's taking care of them and handling them and softening their hearts and dealing with them in their situations, he said he'll, be, he'll bring peace to you. But, but you, you got you to operate in the peace God brings to you. Now I'm back to how do I get my peace? I get my peace by trusting him, leaning on, and confidently hoping in God all way. And when I hope in him and recognize he is who he says he is, he'll do what he says he will do, then no matter what the enemy, I'm coming to a place now, no matter what the enemy does to try to thwart my peace and my joy, He'll give me his peace, Deacon. <laughs> not my peace, not the world's peace. He'll give me his peace. That's that kind of peace that enables me to not only live in my circumstances, but to live above my circumstances. I'm talking to somebody. Don't you want to live above your circumstances? Anybody here tired of living in your circumstances? God says you can live above your circumstances. You can act like you are who you are. You actually have the ability with the Holy Ghost inside of you, empowering, inspiring you to act like who you are. And when you do, you're going to experience power and peace. And you'll be able to rejoice no matter what the circumstances. Now, we're not intellectually numb. We're not rejoicing because the circumstances are coming. But we can rejoice knowing that the circumstances can't last always. Come on, man. <laughs> he told me in the text, it won't last always. And not if I make it through. Come on, man. But when I make it through. When I make it through. My Lord has promised me peace. And joy that goes beyond any measure that I could possibly spend. I was thinking of this, this hymn, uh, and I think that the, the family, the couple's names were Martins. And, and they were talking about him being, uh, he, was, he was a preacher during his day. It's just a little bit of a historical storyline behind it, but you'll recognize this. Preacher of his day, and he was worried, he, he was worried that God was beginning to use him mightily, and his wife was getting seriously ill. And he had the conflict of, do I stay? What do I do? I, do I, I, got this, I got this preaching responsibility that will take me away from my wife. 
for some days. But yet his wife was, was not feeling good. And he didn't know how serious the illness was. And he talked about how he prayed about it. And he prayed about it. And the Lord prompted him that it would be all right. His wife was going to be all right. He needed to get this message to these people that God needed him to speak to. And so I think William Martin, as his name went off, and he, he delivered his message to this powerful congregation, to this people who were they lied to these people in the city and lives were saved, transformed, running down the aisles, giving their lives to Christ. But yet his heart was still, in his flesh, he still worried about his wife at home. And so he gets home from the trip the next day, and he walks in the door, and he finds that his, he finds his wife is standing strong and completely healed. And he's, his heart is filling up inside. And his wife is sitting there over the desk with a pen in hand. Mm. And she begins to write this hymn, God will take care of you. Amen, amen, amen. Anybody know yeah. that? Yes, yes, yes. She says, I've, I've been through the journey and I've been through the struggle. And she's found out that God will, God will. take care of you. Yes. I don't know where you, where you struggle with that. <laughs> I don't know what the journey is that you're going through today. I don't know where the conflict that's weighing between us, this, this, this split may be, may be putting you on a point of indecision is today. But the writer came by to tell you that your God is, a, is like a Mount Zion. Come on, man. He cannot be moved. And he's protecting you on all sides. And he won't let anything happen to you <laughs> that's outside of the scope and reach of his power to handle well, in your life. That's right. I, I need to know that. That's right. Because while I'm powerless, I need to know who, who can pick up that, <laughs> who can handle the rest of this stuff. Yes. And then he says, as you get that, as you get that firmly focused in your identity and in your livelihood, Know that God will give you the ability to walk in peace yes. and in joy. But don't let the world pull your face and your, and your eyes and your mind off into other folks' issues. Walk in the blessing God has for you. If he sends you to other folks' houses, he's sending you there to be a blessing. Yes. Not to be a point of controversy. So carry the blessing. For God would have you to carry the blessing. And watch as you experience the peace and joy. Passes all understanding. The world didn't give you. Come on, can't take it away. <laughs> Let's pray. Father God, I just want to thank you. For blessing us with this moment in time today. As we come to worship you. As we come to praise your name. As we come to study your word, Lord. As we come to fellowship together. As we come to be prepared, girded up for service. Your service. And Lord, I'm praying somebody's heart, someone's heart here has been touched. As we've opened up your word just for the moment. And they feel a desire to come and become a part of your family. Move in them in a mighty way, Lord. It's a new, fresh beginning. Help them to understand and feel that. And so as we move towards the closing of this time together and be prepared to step outside of these walls into the battlefield of the world, keep us faithful, Lord. Keep us joyful. Keep us peaceful. And help us boldly proclaim the good news yeah. of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. We ask this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. And we pray it all. Let all God's people say amen. amen. As the musicians come, I ask you if you will stand with us today. And as we open up the doors of the church, we extend an invitation if you're here to come and become a part of the family. Lord.